Hello and welcome to the Oxygen Addict Triathlon Podcast. We're brought to you every week by our sponsors, PrecisionHydration.com. Precision Hydration offer electrolyte drinks in different strengths to match how you sweat. Personalize your hydration strategy today at precisionhydration.com and get a free box or tube of pH worth up to $9.99 using the code OxygenAddict. We're also brought to you by foodcell.co.uk. The next generation of nutritional carriers designed to allow endurance triathletes and cyclists to carry enough food and gels while allowing easy access. Check it out at foodcell.co.uk. And we're also brought to you by Team Oxygen Addicts and you can find us at team.oxygenaddict.com. And Hells, <laughs> we... Hi. We, we've... <laughs> Take three. <laughs> this is. <laughs> We've had the giggles before we even started. Come on, <clears throat> we can do this. We can do this. <laughs> oh wow! I was Somebody... going to say Rob. I was going to say uh, Prinhound Da, which means uh, good afternoon. It means good afternoon in Welsh, does it? Yeah, I could do Nasta, which is a uh, good evening. So maybe we should do good evening. Nasta, Rob. Nasta, Helen. Sidaki, how are you? Very good. I'm very yeah, impressed. Yeah, I am. Yeah, yeah. So what I happens had, when you go to Tembe for the weekend? It has been Ironman Wales weekend and the lovely Helen has been down and she has been she has been ruthlessly chasing down the finish line interviews. Much more of which you can hear later. We've who do we have, Hells? We had Lucy Gossage. Yep, Lucy, Phil Graves, Heather Wattell, Camilla Pedersen. Brian we Fogarty. Had, yeah, Brian Fogarty. We had Lewis Eccleston. Yeah, so yeah. Some, some good nice. some good audio. I had a good chuckle listening to you. Poor old Phil Graves having his legs tortured on the massage table while you ask him <laughs> questions. Bless there there the is a bit of, a bit of a tale about that one, Rob, in that I was where I was meant to be in the finish line area waiting to get interviews. And um, there was a guy there from BBC Wales. So I said to him, right. You get Matt Troutman and I'll get Phil Graves and then I'll come back and get Matt Troutman. So I went over to speak to Phil. I said, Phil, can I come in? Can I interview you? And uh, he said, Helen, you know, yeah, but I really need to go and get a massage. Will you come in there and you can do it while I'm having a massage? Okay. I was like, yeah, 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 no problem. So just walked into the recovery tent. He got on the uh, massage table. I then was doing the interview and then obviously like, You'll, as you'll hear a little bit later, but then Brian Fogarty walks in. So I was like, well, I may as well carry on and interview Brian Fogarty. And then someone came up to me and said, can I see your accreditation, please? Oh, no. <laughs> I was like, I was like, uh, yeah, uh, so I don't have any accreditation because I was never given any accreditation. But, you know, the media manager absolutely knows I'm here. <laughs> she was like, uh, I, I needed to come outside and then we can check that. You got like, thrown yeah. out. I love it. <laughs> You got thrown, got thrown out. out. <laughs> I was like, oh, no. And I, and I was like, look, I'm really sorry. I know I shouldn't have been in there, but, you know, Phil had said, please, can we do it in there? Um, and, yeah, got thrown out. And then someone else was like, oh, sorry, can I see your accreditation? I was like, I don't have any. I wasn't given any. <laughs> but the media manager, he knows I'm here. It's all fine. Um, and then I think they were just staring madly when, you know, then when Nikki Bartlett, came just before the presentation there and you know someone just gave me her rucksack to look after <laughs> i think they were just like who is this weirdo who is the woman with the microphone she seems to yeah. know everybody she's on first name terms with all of them <laughs> yet she doesn't have accreditation though, though to be fair you have oh. to think that that person's doing their job because thinking that woman that young woman's just followed phil graves into the massage tent oh, no. i'll just check what that that's legit doing? yeah <laughs> no absolutely i this is the thing i i i i totally appreciate that you know that is an area for athletes um so yeah it was quite right of her to check absolutely right so well, let's have a little thing then. Shall we do? Shall we do results first of other other things around the world, and then we'll play your interview out then. That's probably the way to go, isn't it? Yeah. So let's talk about the other ones, and then we're going to come back on to Tembi because there's so much to talk about. There's so much to talk about there. So we'll have a little we'll have a little nosy off around the world at the other races that have been going on. So first up, shout out to uh, sponsors PrecisionHydration.com, makers of the finest and most delicious electrolyte drinks known to man. Hells, I believe you were you were rocking the old Precision Hydration leisure wear this weekend in Tembe. 
correct. It was either the uh, the trucker cap or the bobble hat, which I had on. So pretty much what's that from, you know, five o'clock in the morning through to 9 p.m. at night. I was I was a walking I was a walking billboard for precision hydration. And uh, Ross. Hello, Ross. Uh, Ross actually just recognized me from the cap. And he said, oh, are you Helen from the podcast? Oh, there you go. And very smart of them to make a bobble hat as well, because obviously it's bobble hat season now from September all the way through to next June again. You get to wear the trucker cap for about six weeks in the summertime in the UK and then <laughs> it's straight back into bobble hat weather, isn't it? I tell you, um, Rob, very smart of me to have taken both with me for Wales, where yeah. it did, you know, get warm enough during the middle of the day. And then I was like, oh, my God, I need my bubble hat. Yeah, get the bubble hat back yeah. on. Absolutely. Yeah. So listen, you can get over and check out electrolyte drinks mixed up by the wonderful Precision Hydration at precisionhydration.com. Remember, you can use the code OxygenAddict to get free box or tube of pH worth up to $9.99. Um, so basically it's a risk-free trial we recommend it it's great stuff it doesn't taste horrible and salty if you're racing in hot conditions you're going to need some electrolyte replacement if you're training indoors you're going to need some electrolyte replacement and let's be honest as well as making the best tasting ones around they're all blooming nice chaps as well so get on there and support them precisionhydration.com and it's 9.99 using the code oxygen addict sorry it's not it's free isn't it Free box or tube worth up to nine ninety nine. Correct. Good stuff. So around the world we go. Let's kick off first with um, Wisconsin, where it was a pro race only for the ladies, wasn't it? Correct, Rob. And uh, Lindsay Corbin there was wearing the number one bib and also crossed the line in first position in 9-12. Really comfortable win there. Second was Jenny Hansen of the US and third, Katie Thomas. So... It's good to see Lindsay Corbin back, um, back where where she belongs, Rob. Back on the top step. In Europe, we had Ironman 70.3 Rugen, um, and men's race in particular was an interesting one for me because I was I was sitting down watching for how Patrick Langer was, you know, little, little bits of form indicator for him with only five weeks to go to Kona, and um, and he actually didn't win Hells. I thought. Whole way around, I was thinking, okay, yeah, he's come out of the water. I think he was about a minute down. All right, okay. He's going to turn the afterburners on on the bike. He kind of sat in on the bike. And then it gets to the run, and I thought, all right, here we go. You know, this is where it's going to happen. Just just didn't happen for him this time. He was beaten by about three minutes by Florian Anger. Um So, you know, questions questions being asked, I think, now. Is he, is he hedging his bets before Kona? Is he keeping his keeping his powder dry or or was that what he had on the day? Did Florian Anger have the race of his life? That's it. We we don't know, do we? We were not there and it's it's very different for us to be able to just see results and say, Oh, that's really quick or oh that's mm. a bit slow, but we don't know actually the background to that. Um regardless, Rob, regardless it's it's gonna be a fascinating race in yeah. Hawaii, yeah. isn't it? And that'll be interesting for him because he was he was pretty much under the radar last year. But obviously things change, don't they? You, you go in with the crown, and everybody knows who you are. So he's going to have a tremendously different run into the race, a lot more pressure on him. And I'm wondering whether this this race is basically an indicator of the pressure sitting heavily on his shoulders already. You know, could be, could be because I guess with you know with all of what happened in Kona, then comes the whole load more sort of more media more yeah. sponsorship and and just so much more to manage outside of the normal swim bike run eat recovery mm. isn't it and and i remember a couple of other people have said that previously that sometimes when you're then like sort of thrust into the limelight then it can be very difficult initially to mm. to get used to that and to get your head around that well watch your space i guess we know he's a we know he's an incredible runner when he's in shape and is in form. And um, he'll obviously bring the best form he's got to Kona. So watch this space, eh? Absolutely. On the women's side, uh, Rob, it was a comfortable win for Germany's uh, Laura Philipp. She basically absolutely nailed it. She didn't have the quickest swim. That went to Claire Han, who finished second. Uh, British pro triathlete in 4.32 and then Laura Zimmerman was third uh, in Germ from Germany just a minute after Claire Han and um, Rob, Claire Han 
I recall from Staffordshire 70.3 a few years ago in my age group. I think she nailed the win there. That was when she was racing as an age grouper and went on to race at the 70.3 World Championships in in Austria that year. There you go. So she stepped up from racing pro now. Yeah, super swimmer. Absolute super swimmer. (laughs) All of which brings us round to Ironman Wales. Obviously, fantastic crowning sort of race in the UK at the moment amazing reputation amazing atmosphere when it's down there Helen's got loads and loads of clips of of uh, different athletes racing there for you to listen to in a minute um and on the ladies side first of all it's another win for the machine Lucy Gossage Rob yeah incredible so she had won there twice before in 2013 and in 2017 and then this year you'll hear in her interview you know, she she went into the race with like an unbeaten on an unbeaten streak, way going back to last year with Ironman racing. And how many how many races is she unbeaten in now? What's, what say, she won? I she won Wales, to... didn't she last year? Yeah, and, then, um, and Bolton before that. She won Bolton, then Wales. Did she win Lanzarote? Uh, this Italy. Year? Italy, that's right. At the back end of last yeah. year, then yeah. Lanzarote, then. Um, UK and then Bolton, this, yeah, UK this year, yeah. Wowzers. So is that seven on the trot? I, uh, I need to double check, <laughs> but it's something. That's, it is that's something right. Like that's that, incredible, which is isn't it? Street, which is amazing, yeah. For and someone who's now working full time. <laughs> so working three days a week as an oncologist and throw into the mix the fact that she had medical exams this week as well. So she's, you know, spent a, a lot of time recently since I'm on UK you know, focusing on those exams. So it's just, it is just incredible. And um, yesterday watching her, it was awesome. Um, Saw her on the bike and she came out the, well, she came out the water. Her and Nikki came out quite a few minutes behind. So they had a lot of chasing to do on the bike. And, um, but by the end of the bike, Lucy, you know, led into T2 and then, she just looked so comfortable on that run and just looked like she was absolutely loving it and having a blast. Good stuff there. And then so it, Lucy takes the win. Camilla Pedersen came through for second, didn't she? And yeah. how did Nikki Bartlett look taking third? Oh, so Nikki, oh man, Nikki's an absolute trooper, Rob. Nikki collapsed pretty much when she got over the finish line. So she she came over the finish line. She She had run herself into second. Right. Um, and overtaken Camilla. And then they were pretty close together for a while. And then we looked at the tracker again and, and Nikki had fallen back. And I think by that point, I had probably gone off to the wards, the finish line to go and get the men's post-race interviews. And a friend had said, oh, yeah, she wasn't looking great. And she came over the line like 10 minutes after Camilla Pedersen. And... Joanne Murphy in the finish area was almost trying to say to her, like, you know, go and thank the crowd. And she did, but it was almost like, oh, I really don't, you know, not that I don't want to, but, like, I can't. Not feeling well. Can't, can't. But she did. She sort of, like, went back under the finish arch and kind of semi-clapped, like, you know, thank you. Came back into the, under the finish arch, into that finish area, literally collapsed, and then... You know, the medical teams were around her. She got taken off in a wheelchair and just it was really, really horrible to see someone in that state because she just was not in any way with it. And you could see her like slump in the chair and like the head sort of falling backwards. Just <laughs> she, like, went, this is... she went full will be. Oh, this is really, really not good. And then <laughs> maybe her. another sort of 20 minutes later, 25 minutes later, she came back out. Then they did the uh, podium. Um, but even then she did not she just didn't even look with it on the podium um so yeah i i i do not know rob how she did that last half of that marathon wow, that's off it's to just her. amazing she yeah, dug pretty she deep said, huh? I think, oh she would have absolutely given everything to hang on to to third pro female yeah, yeah amazing work. and tell me about the men's race then what did you what did you see tell me about that tell me about the atmosphere and the and the whole deal so Matt Troutman just looked in 
absolute sublime form on that on that run he just looks so so comfortable phil graves was first up saunders foot on the first lap so up that hill um and then troutman wasn't too far behind him at all and then yeah on the on the run troutman looked he looked the more comfortable of the two okay uh definitely and you know beneath that they, they they did all seem like quite close together. He had a few Spaniards, so like Gustavo Rodriguez, who ended up coming in third, and then Victor del Corral was out there. And the guy who came fifth, Diego, he looked so comfortable, Robbie, a Belgian guy. And he, he looked as comfortable on the run as Matt Troutman. Oh, wow, really? Yeah. Because I, really, really I saw some updates on the, like the live video feed, and um, I saw Matt Troutman and Phil Graves coming in off the bike together. Yeah, um, and then updates that I read said that Troutman had just done the fastest T two and zipped off, and that was the last Phil Grave saw of him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Honestly, Tra- Troutman on the run was just he was ahead, like comfortably, comfortably ahead. Um, yeah, and in the end, he finished seven minutes ahead of Phil Graves, who Great finished to second. See Phil Graves racing well again. I know it's uh, like second place, third time in a row. And I know that he would have hoped for the win and wanted the win, but it's great to see him getting himself back into shape and racing really well. And, uh, you know, second place at a great big event like this is nothing to wrinkle your nose at at all. It's a fantastic performance from him, isn't it? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, like, you'll hear in the interview why, when you sort of say, you know, he came second here, an absolute solid nine hours, um, you'll hear quite why that is so impressive. When we play out the interview, I think. I think so. Well, that's probably, this is probably the, the good place to play that out, I think, now, isn't it? So that listeners can get the benefit of your uh, your brutal finish line interviewing technique. <laughs> <laughs> brutal? I don't think it's brutal, Rob. I'm very polite. No, you know? the interviewing technique's great. It's I, I just love the idea of chasing Phil into the uh, into the massage tent to get the scoop. It's a... In his Speedos. He was literally in his Speedos. Really? I should have with a towel over him but they are they are never letting you anywhere near the male pro finishes again are they i'm loving it (laughs) probably not (laughs) all right listen before we play out the interview we need to give a shout out to sponsors fuel cell you'll have heard us talking about fuel cell over the last couple of episodes it's one of the few carriers that you can carry food or gels attached to the top tube it'll fit almost any bike it can actually get a significant amount of food or gels in. This will take four of the big um, sort of hi-fi fat size gels in there. We can get a couple of decent sized pieces of flapjack in there. So it's been designed to allow you to get a decent amount of stuff in while still allowing you to get your fingers into and out of it one handed as you're riding. So there's a really nifty little slide mechanism on the top that makes it virtually waterproof as you're riding along. So stuff doesn't get soaking wet on the inside. It's dead easy to operate one-handed so you can get stuff in and out one-handed as you're riding along and it remains really aerodynamic despite being the same sort of size as those sort of baggy bento tube top tube bag things so aerodynamically it has been proven in the wind tunnel and the cfd testing to be virtually invisible to the wind and with some of the new bikes it's actually more aerodynamic with that attached to it so dead impressive British company that are a startup who are promoting it, so you can support a bit of British ingenuity as well. Mark, who runs the company, is a very high-performing Ironman triathlete himself when he's not falling off his bike and breaking his collarbone. Bless him. <laughs> Hiya to you, yeah, Mark. Hope you're feeling better, buddy. <clears throat> um, and, yeah, it, it'll remain attached to your bike, either fixed into those two little bolts on your top tube if you've got those, or with some nifty little Velcro ties on the top if you haven't got those on. So you can get over and check it out over at fuelcell.com. We had an offer on up until last week with 20% off. That offer is now expired. So if you're still after one, you can check it out over at foodcell.co.uk. All right, Hells. Awesome. I think it's time to go yeah. over to your interview of the week. We have, I think, leading it off is Lucy Gossage. So here we go. Correct. Here's Helen's audio from Ironman Wales. Lucy Gossage, delighted. I was so happy for you when you crossed that line. You were pretty emotional. <laughs> oh, I had such a fun day. I, I even enjoyed the swim. I never enjoyed the swim. Um, yeah, I just, yeah. I, the support was, was, it's indescribable. It was like a wall of sound. Like running up from the swim, there was just this 
wall of it, it seemed like wall of Lucy's. Um, and yeah, and they're, they're coming out to Saundersfoot Hill on the bike was just immense. That's the bit where I was and you didn't hear me. <laughs> and the run, like, I've never, like, I was in tears with eight miles to go and the last, the last mile, normally you just want to get to the finish and I just wanted to, to keep running around and save it. it up. Yeah, but, like, bottle it and I was trying to do that. Um, yeah, it was. A, it, if you have never done this race, you really should, because it's like even Camilla and Heather, they both said it was amazing. Um, yeah, you really should, and we were lucky this year with the weather. It was you pretty, didn't get any rain, did you? No, it's perfect. Um, it's, it's really windy, but um, yeah, perfect racing day actually. Is today the last one? The last. I am. No, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I'm doing Patagonia Man, Patagon Man in December. Um, I don't know. I, and honestly, I, I like. I had these exams. I hadn't really thought about Wales. I did it because of FOMO. <laughs> I was like, I know if it's on and I'm not in it, I will be gutted. But I had no idea how it goes, and I've no idea if I'll just, you know, tomorrow wake up and actually be dead because I think the stress of the exams and. Everything might take have taken more out of me, or I will wake up and I'm like, I want to do another one. <laughs> so I've no idea which way it will go. How hellish <coughs> has this week been? Win? Because sorry, <laughs> yeah. did you win. I did. Oh, well done. We <laughs> Thank saw you. you. You had the biggest smile. We saw you. Running. You had the biggest smile all the way through the Aww, camp. Thank lovely. you very much. Because a lot of people don't, do they? They're in a zone, and thank you're you. really enjoying it. Thank well you very done. much. <laughs> They're alive. <laughs> How, yeah, how, <coughs> how hellish has this week been? Because you had... Oh, the exams that? are horrible. Like six hours with an hour break in a driving test. Oh, really, I just hope I pass them. I work really hard, really hard. Um, but, you know, probably the lesson is that I've always overtrained because actually, you know, I was probably super fresh physically. Like mentally I was exhausted, but um, physically probably... Yeah, fresh. I think that the thing about the exams, the hardest bit was actually always having internal conflict because when I was training, I, I wanted to be revising. When I was revising, I wanted to be training. And the only time I didn't have any of that was when I was at work. And it was actually quite, you know, I'm at work, I can't train, I can't revise. This is easy. Um, so that was probably the hardest, the hardest bit, actually. And then mentally leading up to it, you said you were mentally exhausted. Were you almost like just shattered and just like I can't even can't even think about it? Well, I couldn't think about it until Thursday, and then I. <laughs> then we were like panic. <laughs> well, then I was like, I haven't unpacked any of my rubbish from Bolton. I just, it's like because you know Bolton wasn't that long ago, and I have literally just had to work pretty hard, so I just bunged it all in the room. Like, oh my god! <laughs> Luckily, I had a lovely friend who sort set my bike for me, um, but. Yeah, so there's a lot to be said for racing with no pressure. So I had, I had zero pressure. And racing just because you want to is, is a good way to do it. So you know before this race you said about the number one, you said this might be the last time that I have the chance. Is that because, as you were just saying, that it might be your last Ironman or because you... I don't know, why did you say that? I'm, I'm fairly certain I won't be racing next year. Um, and I won't, if I do do another Ironman, they won't give me number one. Like it's a real privilege to get to to get to wear it, and I think yesterday when I opened it, it kind of hit me a little bit. It was the first time that I realised that I was kind of in my head that I was actually doing the race. But um, yeah, I think it it hit me. Of, you know, my it was an accident really triathlon, and it's it was so humbling running around here. And I, I think you know getting to wear number one is something that most people don't get, and I think it just yeah, I don't know made me reflect a little bit um it's been an yeah it's been an incredible experience and and the people i met and the the support i've had is i just wanted to bottle it today like their last normally you want the the run to end and i like honestly i just wanted to keep running around or, or just kind of i don't know bottle what it's like because there won't be many more days like that there might never be any more days like that but um yeah it's special Right, Phil Graves on the massage table in the uh, recovery tent afterwards. Uh, Phil, how the heck are you? Uh, without swearing. 
Well, I've been better. Um, yeah, I'm like... I was thinking in bed last night, like, if I... Obviously, I've been second day the last two years. I was thinking, like, if I win, I'll be overjoyed. If I'll be second, I'll be like, hmm. And if I was third, I'd be really disappointed. So, I guess I just feel a bit average, really. You know, like, I think the field was a little bit weaker than last year. Um, but, like, the pro field here is always, like, quite small. But you always get some really, really good guys turning up. Like... Victor Del Corral, like the last time I properly raced against him was 2012 in uh, Ironman Lanzarote, and like he just ran past me like at halfway of the marathon, like an absolute steam train. Um, so the yeah, others, and like obviously Matt Troutman has won here before, so there's some really really good guys here. So to beat a few of them's good, but Matt was um, a lot better than me today. Um, I did a 100 mile time trial last weekend, which I kind of kept on the low down. Um, the BDCA won um, on the A50, and I rode 3.34, averaged 45.3k an hour, so I knew I was riding pretty well. And I just rode it really steady, like my average heart rate was 136 for 45.3k an hour average, thought that was pretty good. Um, That's insane. Yeah, um, so I knew my biking was alright, but Matt was just like in a different league, like riding today, like. I was struggling to follow him at, at some points and he did like 80% of the work um, and I did like 20 and I, ma I managed to drop him on the descent into Wiseman's Bridge on the first lap and I got about 30 seconds on him um, but then literally there was no point in pressing on I just like sat up for like the next 20k and just pedalled nice and slowly because I knew I'd gain a lot more just sat by sat on him um, but yeah the stronger man definitely won today and definitely a long way off off that sort of form at the moment how had your training been leading into this um well not great to be honest i've only done about six eight weeks decent training um is that because of injury or no. just focusing on time trialing and stuff no no not at all just like i've just been a bit down this year just slacking motivation and just just not really been feeling it like i did outlaw half at the start of the year and was fourth and I was really, really unfit, just like a bit depressed, just like not being bothered about it. Um, but I managed to sort of get my act together a bit, sort of in June, July time. And I only bought my pro license like six weeks ago. Um, and my dad sort of talked, my dad had a chat to me and said, like, if you don't do Ironman Wales, you know, it would be a mistake to miss it and stuff. So I got it entered about five weeks ago, just before the cut off date. And, um, and yeah, just put my head down for like the last five, six weeks. Um, done, some, done some decent time trialing, some decent running. Or well, what, what I could do in the limited time I've had. Um, and literally I've found a bit of form really, really well. Uh, the last few weeks I've been swimming, swimming quite well. Uh, obviously that showed today, Matt Lehman. I just sat on his feet and I was surprised we got like quite a big gap um, on the swim. Like it wasn't the swim wasn't that hard like it's always a nightmare the second lap swimming through all the age groupers and that's something they sort of really need to address because it just makes a mockery of the swim really like it's just an absolute nightmare um, yeah so the swim was pretty like easy really there was, wasn't like pushing on or anything and then yeah I thought I thought I was going quite well the first bit of the bike I was just focused on being aero on the first 40k because it was a headwind so I was surprised Matt I think I don't know how much time we had out of out of transition, um, but Matt passed me about 35k, and I thought, oh well, he, he must he must be going all right because I wasn't exactly hanging around. I was just focused on being aero into the headwind and just pushing on nice and steady. Um, yeah, and then we just rode together for the rest of it. And did or has today? Ah, oh, the pain there. Yeah, has today, sore. and has the training that you did in the run up to it? Has it given you some more encouragement again? Well, yeah, it's just, I sort of have these races where um, sort of it, it, it reminds me that I'm not absolutely useless, even though sometimes I think I am. Um, You're not. Like, I'd, I'd rate my fitness level probably like seven, maybe seven and a half out of ten. Um, like, I've been, I've been doing some really good sessions, really, really good sessions. But, yeah, this is the first Ironman I've done since, we're, since um, well, the first one I've got round since Wales last year. I think um, 
a bit a, a bit of the part like why I was really disillusioned. Like the first part of the year was like last year here. Um, like they had um, somebody put like some slick oil on the course and I fell off and my chain came off and I only lost by two minutes and I could have easily I like when I look back on it though I, I looked at the where I could have lost where I lost the time and there was like two minutes there so that really frustrated me um, then I went to Arizona like really fit and um, was was in the front group and I punctured at 70k and that's a long way to go for puncture like it, like and it was like completely irre- irre- irreparable like it was a massive gash in the tire so i just sort of felt the whole world was against me um like nothing was going right um so yeah so i was just really really disillusioned but yeah onwards and upwards do you know what might you do next race wise or are you really is that something that you're going to spend some time thinking about well i've entered 70.3 weymouth in two weeks um, I'm unsure whether I'll race that. I've also been to Diamond, Arizona again because I've done that the last two years. The first year I got really sore feet on the bike, uh, and last year obviously I punctured, which put me out. And we have a really, we have a really really nice homestay there. Um, so last year, like, it wasn't a complete write-off because I had a lovely week with um, Walter and Tiffany, who we stay with. They're absolutely great, and they like completely make the week. Um, and it's just like me and my dad go and it's like a lads week away in Phoenix, Arizona you know we we have such a good time Um, and I love America like obviously I lived in Austin for a while and yeah it's just a really really nice a nice week away that I'll miss if we don't go this year so we'll see I mean it's quite hard to train for it you know when the clocks change and it's a bit of a nightmare but it's a fast course and obviously I've got a I'm not unfit, so if I can just press on from here, um, then who knows? And finally, and then I'll let you carry on, and then you can do a bit more squealing and stuff. Um, what does make you keep coming back to Tenby? Well, it's it, it kind of suits me this course. Um, I'm not like a super super fast athlete. I'm more like a strong athlete. Um, I am a bit overweight this year than what I have been the last few years, like two or three kilos heavier than what I have been. I think that's more just through like depression weight, I've just been eating, just been at home, just like stuff in my face, like my diet's been absolutely terrible. Um, but yeah, it, it's definitely a course that suits me, like it's, it, I know I know it's, Tenby's a bit of a way away from York, but it's only like five, five and a half hours to get here. And like the one thing that always sort of makes me so happy is like everybody just cheers for me. Like, it, it's just incredible. It's literally like a race in York for me now. Um, obviously, this is my third year in a row doing it. Saying that, though, on the second lap today, I was really struggling. And I was running with Lucy Gossage for quite a bit on the second lap. And literally, everybody was cheering for her. And yes, there was one bit where we had been cheering you on. And then Lucy was there, and suddenly it's like, better cheer for Lucy. <laughs> yeah, sort of like, Lucy, Lucy got like 95% of the... I kept cheering so you never even spoke to me. <laughs> Lucy's that's Brian. <laughs> yeah, that's Brian Fogarty, bless him. I was in a world of pain, mate. Um, yeah, Lucy was getting like 95% of the cheers and I was just like feeling quite left out. And then, um, so, so I decided I had to drop her then as punishment. Um, yeah, so that was quite frustrating, but I hope she, I hope she wins. It looks like she's going to win today. There was a point in the second lap where I was like, let's just run together, Lucy. You've got to keep me running because I'm going to drop out here. Just, just don't make me drop out. I, I, honestly, t- I, honestly, we were running side by side, and I said, "Lucy, do not make me stop. Seriously, if I, if I stop, you've got to keep me going." Um, no pressure, Doc. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and then, uh, and then, uh, then that was in a really bad patch, and then I came back round a bit, and then I dropped her. So, yeah, all was good. That it was quite funny, but yeah, obviously, Lucy, the support Lucy has here is just absolutely incredible, and. I think I need to win this a few times for me to get that same level of support. I'll, I'll think about that next the next year when I'm training for this race again. Ryan Fogarty, get in there, what are you getting? Hot chocolate, Helen. <laughs> Hot chocolate, I've craved it. Craved it for about an hour. Oh. How are you? I'm happy I finished. Uh, after the season I've had, that was, that was my number one priority. Got off to one hell of a bad start. Did you come off your bike again? No. Oh, good. No, I had a few wobbles, but... But no, um, what a course, what a race. I loved it. I loved it. You're right. I'm going to take your advice, Helen. 
Really, really enjoyed it. Great atmosphere. Um, no, I'm happy. No, I put in a solid. From where, I, where, where I'm at in my fitness, I, I was happy that. I just. Uh, well, you you know, obviously, when I last seen you, I, after that, I spent you were three off to days in hospital. Do you want to grab that and we can sit down, by the way? Yeah. Or do you want? You might not want to sit down. No, do you want to sit down? Right, you or are you happy standing here? Yeah, I'm happy. Okay. So yeah, we saw um, each other. You were off to hospital. Yeah. Um, th the thing was, I ended up from that. I, I couldn't swim for three weeks. And as you know, with me being not the strongest swimmer, I just could I got back swimming eventually, and, and uh, I think I neglected it a bit. And then when I, I've come today to swim, and it just couldn't. I just didn't. That. I just, you know, just terrible, terrible. I tried to join board with that one, but um, but the bike and the yeah, run. Yeah, yeah, I worked hard on the bike. I, I must have. I wouldn't have thought there were too many going quicker because I, I really have to work. Um, and I, I held a solid run. I, I was a tough course, that. Isn't it? What a tough run course. <laughs> I thought Bolton was hard. That's harder than Bolton. No, no doubt about it. It's just um, every bit you look and it's like up. Up, down, up. But the down. the down doesn't feel like up. The no, down well, doesn't feel like down. The, the down feels like the, up. The downs hurt, don't they? Because they're actually quite steep downs. So you, you're sort of having to tanker on. You, your quads and ammies are just tightening up. And, oh God, I'm gonna finish. Gotta finish. Are you are you happy with like where you finished today in terms I'm not of? Not even sure the position. I, I know it was 9:30 time. Like, uh, which on this course is it, not bad. I mean, my swim. I, I know my swim. I don't even want to know my swim. To be honest, it was just terrible. Um, yeah, set off obviously set off with pro as, as a pro, but obviously they I mean, they're gone. So I swam the first lap pretty much by myself, and I was absolutely all over the shore, zigzagging. And it feels really lonely, doesn't it? It's, it's so much harder than yeah. Bolton. Yeah, 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 definitely. For me, it was. Um, the sighting is terrible, so I just I think it must have been a combination of that. I was just swimming by myself and working hard, probably too hard, and then packs caught me, and I. And I couldn't find any rhythm or form at all. I was just thrashing around. Couldn't wait to get out, to be honest. <laughs> Couldn't wait to get out and get on the bike. Uh, but I love the bike course. I love the bike. I'd love to come back because um, it's a course that would suit you. If it would, it would, it'd help if you knew the course. I mean, we're coming off that last that, that, the last race. I was very tentative. I thought it was just the last thing I wanted to do were, were a few times the back wheel went and I oh, oh, please, not again. Um, Luckily, I stayed on, and uh, what a what a good race! What a really really good race. Better than you had even expected. Massively, yeah, yeah, massively. And I tell you what, some cracking performances. Young lad here, Henry Irving, um, awesome. Phil Graves looks strong, really strong. God, he's miserable out on course though. I'm going to tell him when I see him again. My side now. I kept saying, "Go on, Phil, cheer him on." He didn't want to know, even acknowledging me. I think, I think I'll have to stop that for future. You were giggling at us when we were when we were cheering. You were definitely giggling. We cheered for Phil. Nothing. I think there, I think he vaguely cracked a smile because there was literally <laughs> no one else around in these loons going. <laughs> Phil Graves. Phil Graves. <laughs> He's probably just conserving his energy. There's a few times. You, I mean, people are so many people wanting to clap. I, you don't have the energy to even clap young kids' hands. I feel bad. I'm trying to like just say I, thanks to everyone who's like cheering me on every single lap. I don't even know half of them. And there's Go on, Foggy, go on, Foggy. And, oh, it's yeah. What a, what, a, what a really good feeling to finish that tough race. Love it. So, what's next for you then? Uh, I'm, I'm going to see Hot chocolate, feel. then what? Hot chocolate, massage. Um, I, I'm, I'm, I'm enter, I've entered Barcelona. Um, I wanted to see how it reacted. And I'll, I'll be honest, I don't really like saying it, but my foot that I've, I've fra I'm still fractured. The last 10k was starting to feel it. I've started to feel it. And uh, I don't think that's a good sign, so I'm going to have to see how that reacts. Um, I would like to do Barcelona just to finish the season off and just just, just sort of get back to basics, like I said to you back in Aula, just get back to enjoying what, what I love doing. And forget about position, times, and the cat type of person, most of us are, you get on the start line, you're going to give it your all. You don't have to worry about that, but we do. We find ourselves sometimes like, and it's just, it's daft. It, it is, and I'm... I'm I just, all, all, all today I just wanted to get that medal and just enjoy it and, and, and I did and um, I think if you do that and I think we're doing that, you, you actually race better, you know. I, I think we can all take a leaf out of Lucy's book for that, can't we? Yeah, yeah, she, she's, uh, yeah, she's alright for that and she, and uh, Nikki Bartlett, she's always, she's always smiling and, and, and giving it, cheering each other on, which I like. And it's nice to see, it's nice for Brits to, to do that, well, for everyone to do that.
Awesome. I'm gonna let you have your hot chocolate. Thanks. Thank you, you so much. No, thank you. Nice seeing you again, as always. So, Camilla, congratulations. Um, second place at Ironman Wales. Yeah, it's, uh, it's of course it's uh, it's always more fun to win. But I knew that Lucy Gosset, she's a machine and she's good. And um, I didn't really have a, a good bike because I had a crash and uh, my saddle was loose and my handlebar got loose. And it took 105 kilometers before I came to a mechanic. So I had to sit up and um, so it wasn't really the best bike. But then again, you just have to continue and keep going. And I couldn't have, have been her anyway. So Lucy just did great. So I'm really happy with second. How did you find it out there? How what? How, how was it for you? How was coming to Tembi and I in Wales? You probably heard a lot about it. I only heard good things about it. and uh, But the final decision was just made a week ago that I was going to race. So I haven't really prepared much for it. So I'm, of course I'm happy that I still performed okay. Um, so, But I know I, I can do better. So I'm working on that. Did, what about the support out there? It's the support is amazing. It's uh, even though people don't know you, they cheer for you and uh, say your name because your name is on your number uh, belt. So um, it's just amazing and makes it so much more fun and so much more easy and so much more fast. And how difficult have the last few years been for you after your crash and everything? Oh, it's it's been um, it's yeah, it's not been easy. It's it's been really been hard work and. Um, and there's still a lot of things that I can't get answers to after my accident, but it's because they can't really compare it to, to other people that have had... Because I, I have some with my brain, I have injuries in my brain, and when you have that, it never heals. Uh, and, and the brain controls the whole body, so I have some problems with the nervous system, uh, and that also control the muscles, and that's why I've been having trouble with... Um, like lasting so long as I did today so I'm really really happy that I didn't die or the body shut down like I've done the last couple of years so now we know what to work more on uh, from now on so um, it's one more step ahead instead of taking a step back so really I love pleased. that and you're still smiling I'm still happy really happy <laughs> fantastic I know you have been hanging around for ages so I'm gonna let you go but thank you so much for stopping to talk thank you so much Heather, we're tell fourth today here at Ironman Wales, but what was, like, are you happy with that? How was it out there for you? Yeah, you know, um, I was really focused on 70.3 year olds in South Africa, and I was kind of bummed that I didn't have the best day there, coming 11th just outside the money. Um, but I hadn't really done like an Ironman specific block, so I just wanted to, to come and like experience this epic race. And so I knew that the fitness was there, and I could have a good day, but I really didn't have. A set expectations you know I'm just a competitive person you're always aiming for the podium you know you always like imagine you can have a great performance so I was happy with it on the day um, had a good swim I, I rode pretty strong for the first loop in a bit and then when Lucy and Nikki went by me I just couldn't really respond so I just toughed it out rode my own pace and then uh, yeah I just hung tough on the run it felt like a pretty respectable day this course yeah, what did you make of it? Oh my goodness, it's so hard. It's, but it's awesome hard. You know what I mean? Like, I feel like Ironman, the kind of courses I like are really challenging. It's a bit of an adventure. Like, it's a huge accomplishment to get to the finish line. And just the four loops, like the hills and stuff, and the wind was relentless on the bike. You end with like a 16% pitch and then a 12%. But the crowds are crazy. And then it's just uphill and downhill and uphill and downhill and so you're kind of just like laughing like this is ridiculous this is so hard but yet it's inspiring you know because you just see everyone out there just getting it done and the crowd support was amazing so I just was like all right well just just you just keep ticking it over so was it harder than you expected you've probably heard a lot about it yeah for sure you know people are tend to over exaggerate hardness but here arguably they under <laughs> like it I knew the bike was going to be hard, but I didn't quite appreciate how hard the run was. Like It's insane, isn't it? It's really insane. It's just like four miles up and then four miles sort of down. But it's not easy down. Like, it hurts your quads more. And then, yeah. <laughs> uh, but, but, yeah, like like I said, the, uh, it's one of those ones you can feel really proud of having finished. Yeah. And I bet you're, you're glad to have come here. 100%. Um, the landscape is just gorgeous. Um, we, we were staying in this um, 
lovely place. Just, I, I, just everyone is really friendly, and so it's one of those just great experiences. Yeah. So are you off home now? What? Or off we're, to? We're spending a couple days ar- around, um, but then yeah, we're flying back to Canada this week. Trevor and I actually didn't focus on the Big Island this year. Um, we sort of need a break. It's a course with the heat and humidity that uh, I've, I've struggled with in the past. Put in like big blocks and you know come twelfth or fin- eighth is my best finish. But it's just like it's not appealing. Whereas this, even though it's so hard, I don't know, it's just somehow more appealing. So we were like, well, we just want to hit up some races like this, some iconic events, and then maybe we'll see about about it for next year. But we, we really like racing in Europe. So <laughs> come over here again. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that no, but honestly, like the atmosphere is amazing. The crowd support is amazing. People really support the events. Uh, which which is something you just appreciate as an athlete, yeah. Lewis Eccleston, you just crossed the line. What was that? Oh, f- five minutes short of ten hours. Amazing. How was it? It was really good. Really enjoyed it. Never done it before. Never wrecked the course. So I didn't know what I was in for. So I just expected the worst. Really thought it was going to be a really, really tough day. But it turns out it's all right. The roads are absolutely fantastic. It's so smooth. No potholes rolling roads and yeah just really good solid tough race what a big smile on your face <laughs> i know i am I'm, I'm over the moon i couldn't have executed a better race if i tried i got got picked for first place but there's nothing i could have done it's just it's one of them in it you can only do your best on the day and that's whatever result you get you get so yeah i'm happy second place I'm gonna take my place for kona as well next year <laughs> Oh, excellent. So you're going to go back next year? Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Learned a lot last year. In a short amount of time, we had to train from qualifying at UK and then, yeah, hopefully I can execute a better plan. Got a full year to prepare for it. Confident I can do well there next year. And what made you want to come to Tembe? Early qualification for Kona. <laughs> I just love to race as well. I really wanted to come out of, of uh, Ironman UK this year injury free so I could enter this race and do it because you know you hear so many good things about it and it's just a bucket list race for everybody, everyone says how good it is in the atmosphere and it is, it's absolutely deafening when you go up the last, the last few climbs near the end, the really steep climbs, the crowd and the support is awesome, they're just everywhere. How did you think it compared to Bolton? The road surface has made it made the difference. It was awesome. It was really good, uh, and it's good to do different races as well to freshen it up, rather than doing the same races all the time. Not knowing what to you're expect. Getting, you're getting a hug. It's all right. I was going to give this guy a hug because we were with Fine. each other most of the way. <laughs> he caught me and dummy in the end. Top, top, top word, man. What did you finish first? Second. Yeah, I think I got second too. So. Yeah. Cool. What you can do is. Race your best race and it is what it is. We done good. We done good. Yeah. Hopefully Kona then. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. You can uh, come and share with me and Joe Skipper if you like. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Awesome. Take care. Take care. See you in a bit. So like Rob, Joe Skipper, go on. I, I like the I like the live at the finish line interviews with people. I think it's great. They're good. So you, a lot of the, uh, you probably heard a weird noise in some of them, oh, especially Lewis is there. That was the foil blanket because it was pretty yeah. chilly at the end there. You and it's quite them. difficult. Yeah, Rust- rustling and keeping hear. them wrapped up. Yeah. No, it's good. It shows it's, shows it's live and in the heart of the action, doesn't it? Yeah, correct. I, I, I couldn't believe how much Phil opened up to me. So thank you, Phil Graves, for talking to me uh, whilst on the massage table. Yeah, and what then, an honest interview, hey? Yeah, I know. Really, really honest interview. Um, and I, I just hope that, yeah, this weekend has given him the, you know, the sort of confidence again, Rob. Yeah, to actually boost, know. yeah, definitely. Yeah. Do you know what? I think, I think so many people will get so much from listening to Phil talk because loads of the guys in, in uh, the team Facebook group were talking this week about like the, the idea of mid-season slumps or losing motivation or feeling a bit down about training sometimes. And one of the themes that ran through that was people felt guilty for feeling that way. They felt like, you know, they mm. shouldn't they shouldn't feel like this because triathlon's a thing they really enjoy doing. But they all went through phases or loads of people in the, the Facebook group went through this phase of I just can't motivate myself to train at the moment. So to hear a pro triathlete open up like that and say, 
yeah, do you know what? I've I've been really down and I haven't felt like I'm able to train properly. I've been overeating and I've not been able to train properly and I feel like I'm a bit heavy. That's going to resonate with so many people. Yeah, yeah. And then the fact that he's obviously turned that around and he's sort of coming out and, and, and uh, yeah, able to come out the other side of that and still perform really well. Yeah. Really well, Too you know? Right. I mean, what was it he said? He rode three three thirty four for a hundred miles the week yeah. before the race, averaging forty five kilometers an hour. That's it's he's a phenomenal athlete, isn't he? Yep, absolutely phenomenal. Yeah, good. It's and great, I, yeah, great stuff. I really hope then that this can be like a springboard to you know maybe as he mentioned, go on to Arizona again and and things like that because he's yeah. he's so talented. Yeah. Well, it'd be it'd be great to see him go. Obviously, the Wales course is super hilly and Phil's got this incredible bike strength. But one of his strengths, I think, is that time trial and ability. So a course like Mm. Arizona, he's either going to be able to get off the front and ride on his own and just destroy everyone. Or he's going to be able to ride with a pack of people and, you know, sit third wheel and not put any effort out and turn it into a running race. So I'm really looking forward to seeing how he goes there. And uh, yeah. Yeah. And then Rob Lucy as well, what she was saying about, um, you know, that that she probably won't be racing Ironman again next year. And I, I, did, and I, I think that was part of the emotion of it all at the finish yeah. line for her. Um, and yeah. just, you know, it, she's got such an incredible record at, there and at home races. And, and I guess it's just such a significant part of her life which she probably was as she said never really expecting um and the people that she's met through it and everything that she's achieved in it and just stuff that she would never have thought possible in it yeah and and she does love it the thing that i love about iron man is that everybody gets the same experience from the slowest person to the very fastest person Somebody like Lucy has gone into this without any expectations and it's turned out that alongside a hell of a lot of hard work, she's got the genetics and talent to do really well at it. But she's having the same fundamental experience that the people finishing in Heroes Hour are having in that it's expanded her world massively. You know, she's got to meet all kinds of people from all different walks of life that she would never have met. She's not been doing this sport. And that's what I love about the sport. It brings so many people together that I genuinely don't think that a premiership footballer has the same experience as a guy playing Sunday league football. Whereas you do in Ironman and 70.3. Yeah. Yeah. And I would say that is so, so true. Like I'm doing stuff now that through triathlon that I would never have thought I would do uh, you know when i when i sort of think back to the the first race that i did in nant which in the brine swimming pool and <laughs> it was just a little bit of fun and something because i had got injured running and then you know what six what seven years later yeah everything that i'm doing now related to triathlon and yeah so much stuff it, it is amazing and then i i guess another hard thing is once you've been at the very very at the very top of your sport then it would be difficult to go back and do it just for it'd be very difficult I think for some people to then go back and do an Ironman just for fun because you know what you were capable of yeah but you know what isn't it interesting that so many people still do you've got yeah. yeah. Um, who am I thinking of? Um, uh, someone Scott, like Natasha Badman? Yeah, Natasha Badman or Scott Molina yeah. come back yeah. and race as age group. And they're not racing age group in the way that they, they want to go out and, you know, I heard Chris McCormack talking the other week about coming back and racing age group. And you're like, well, come on, dude, you only retired like two years ago. But, you know, they're, <laughs> they're going out and they're racing and they're not winning the age group. They're they're obviously training a hell of a lot less than they were back in the day, but they're just loving doing the sport still. So yeah. it's great. I'll tell you what, mate, I have a lot more fun racing these days in 50% of the shape I was. <laughs> <laughs> because, because it's that, well, it goes back to again, what even what Lucy said in her interview, because there's that element of just, well, it doesn't matter. I can go and have fun. Like I'm doing Sandman, Rob, in two weeks time. Yeah. 
<laughs> I have not. Yes, I'll have done the, the uh, swim training. I have not done any hard running at all, <laughs> probably since, I don't even know, like, I, I genuinely don't really know. Biking again. I haven't done any intervals on that bike for quite a while, so um, it'll but be fun. You really, you're really looking forward to just getting out there and having some fun, now, right? I said, th- yeah. I don't really. I'm not really bothered. I'm just. I'm going to go and have some fun. Spread the race force love. Sell some fuel by cake books the day before. So if you're coming, please bring ten pounds. And um, yeah, go and just have a good giggle. Great. Well, give Helen a shout if you're there. <laughs> yes. Right. Well, listen. I want to talk about something that Lucy uh, Lucy mentioned in her interview because I've got a quote that I wrote down from her here, Hells. She said partway through, um, probably the lesson from today is that I've always overtrained because physically today I was super fresh. And I thought that was, that was such a good point to talk about for Coach's Couch today. Because if somebody like Lucy is recognizing that a lot of the time in her career she's been physically overtrained and she's only realizing at the end when she comes along to do something and she hasn't put anywhere near the volume of training in that she's used to doing. How applicable is that to the every man and the every woman in the street? And I thought that was really worth emphasizing to people who were listening because it's so common that we see people in the last couple of weeks before the big 70.3 or the big Ironman sort of go, Oh, it's two weeks away. I've really got a pile of training in now over these last couple of weeks. And what happens is they end up really tired. Even if they're really fit, they're really tired for race day and they have a disappointing performance. Or worse, they pile that training on and they end up picking up a niggle or worse, an injury or a bit of a sniffle or they feel not quite themselves for race day. So I thought it was such a big thing because something that comes up all the time in the team Facebook group is exactly this. Two weeks before race day, it's like, coach, I don't think you've given me enough training. I'm feeling really good. Give me some more. <laughs> I want to do more. Can I go and do a fast run session? You know, there's a there's a club nearby that's got an interval session. I feel like I could go and really smash something out. And I'm always saying, aren't I, like the coach's job is very often not to motivate people and not to push people on. It's to say no to people and tell them you need to back off and you need to hold it back for race day. So, If this is you, you're out there and you're listening and you're two weeks out from your race and you're wondering whether you should go out and really pile the training on, I'd say listen to Lucy Gossage's advice here and just go in a little bit physically undercooked for race day and be be fresh, ready to go and really up for it rather than completely cooked. I want to echo those a zillion times, Rob. Yeah. I really, really do. It's... Yeah, it's so easy. I remember even Rachel Joyce when we spoke to her in her in in her one of her interviews with us, and um, she said it was the first Iron Man she did. I, I remember, and she said that she thought it was a good idea to do a little bit of panic training the week before, and you know, go out on her or maybe the first time in Cone or something like that. And she just said I I completely overcooked it, mm. and then had a bad race. And um, yeah, so yeah, far better to be undercooked than overcooked. You said it. All right. Now then, moving on a little bit. A couple of bits of news for you before we finish up today. First up, there's going to be a new 70.3 race in France next year. Rob, there is. And I saw this and I thought, oh, this looks nice. And it's going to be Les Sables de Lonne in the Vendée, which is on the west coast of France, probably about halfway down. And I just saw it and I thought, oh, that brings back memories of camping holidays when i was a little person and uh, yeah lovely part of france rob yeah absolutely beautiful i've just been down that way for holiday this summer and beautiful weather beautiful scenery lovely warm water i think it's gonna be a killer event really really good and oh yeah it's flat gonna... as flat on the bike as well around there yeah and it's going to be a canal swim so it's not even in the sea just as well because the surf's pretty tasty there during the summertime <laughs> I was thinking you don't want to be swimming out through six foot surf, do you? <laughs> oh, no. It does say that it's going to go through the forest. I, I, that forest is like, I just recall that probably on hired bikes at mm. the age of, you know, eight or nine going over, going through pine trees. And yeah, yeah beautiful area. Hopefully, yeah, very, very nice. Um, yeah. And then the 
what's the word? That, what's the word, Rob? The run, the run bit. Three loops around uh, Les Sables de Lon. Good stuff. And we've That's also cool, got coming up this weekend the uh, the grand final in Gold Coast, Australia, uh, where Vicky Holland is in with a sniff of the overall win. Correct. So there is like something only like 34 points between her and Katie Zafiris, who is currently leading the overall standings. So effectively, Rob, whoever whoever uh, finishes ahead, whoever crosses will... the line gets the overall championship. Correct. Yeah. Whoever finishes ahead of the other one. Yeah. We'll get Good that stuff, win. Right. So that's very cool. And then um, the other people who are in contention... Uh, not for um, they they could mathematically claim the overall title, but what they definitely very much could do is get on the overall podium. Are Georgia Taylor Brown, who's had a really really good season this year, and Jess Learmonth too. Brilliant. So a lot of British interest there. Correct. And Mario Mola pretty much is nailed on for the men's title. <laughs> he sure is. Yeah. So keep your eyes out for that. Then it'll probably be on the BBC this weekend, won't it? I'd imagine. Uh, yeah, it's uh, going to be on the red button and then there'll be highlight shows as well. Cool stuff. All right. Well, nice one, Hells. Uh, top work this weekend, cheering people on, waving your precision hydration hat around and getting some finish line interviews. That was really good. I felt like I was there. I felt like I had all the emotion as Lucy Gossage was talking at the finish line there. So top uh, work. Rob, can I t- say one thing? My lesson that I learned this weekend, it was a good lesson to learn, actually. Okay. It genuinely is <laughs> as hard being a spectator for an Ironman as it is doing it. <laughs> I, you don't don't it have the... I don't know if it genuinely is. It, it might no. figuratively be. <laughs> no, seriously. It, we were, right, you don't have the DOMS. You don't have the doms the following day. Fine. I have throat doms. Okay. <laughs> My throat really hurts today from shouting. We walked, right? My watch thing said 18 miles. Now, wow. granted, I don't think it was 18 miles because if you clean your teeth, it, it seems to think that you've walked. And I was shaking a rattle. So I think that <laughs> that would have. Uh, yeah, added a, and might have counted bit. towards but, it. Yeah, but, but let's say more or less walked a half marathon yesterday my alarm went off at quarter to five i got into bed around about quarter past ten and yeah i can see it is it it was a big day you so put a good shift in didn't you put a good shift in so absolute total respect now i had it before but even more now for our amazing friends and family who come and support us at these races it is good fun supporting but it can be stressful and it is so tiring and for anyone who i think for the partners who end up looking after if you've got children they have to look after the kids that is a long time to keep little little people little humans um occupied and interested so absolutely go (laughs) and give an even bigger thank you to your amazing people who support you all the way through it because yeah it's a lot of work good stuff all right well listen i think we had better wrap it up there hells so one final shout out to our sponsors thanks very much to precisionhydration.com and foodcell.co.uk and uh, a little bit of a sneak trail here we're going to be opening up a public Facebook group, an auction addict triathlon community. We've we've had a little look and thought, there's a lot of good stuff going on in our private group, but we want to do some stuff for the general public as well. So keep your eyes peeled for that. That's going to be out, probably open in the next week or so. So uh, yeah, watch this space, everybody. That should be cool, shouldn't it, Hells? Love it. Nice, nice. Oh, and Rob, chat going on. one last thing to finish off with, which yeah. uh, seen tonight. Um, so someone must have said to Chrissy Wellington, what podcasts do you recommend? Yeah. Her answer, Oxygen Addicts. Love it. Oxygen there you go. Addict. Yep. Pop Babbitt, Tina Muir and Marathon Talk. There you go. We're up there, Rob. Recommended by former world champion Chrissy Wellington. You're in good company, listeners. <laughs> All right, listen, until next week then. Thanks very much, everyone. I'm Coach Rob Wilby. 
I'm Helen Murray. And you've been listening to the Oxygenetic Triathlon Podcast. Have a great, safe training week, everyone. And we'll speak to you all again soon. Cheers. See ya.